Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez, and today we're gonna to talk about boundary surface. Now, boundary surface, it's been around for a while. Nothing has changed in SOLIDWORKS 2016, but there are some updates to sketching splines in 2016 that we are gonna talk about and show how you can make a higher quality boundary surface. If you've never used a boundary surface before, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the difference between it and the lofted surface. If you have used it before, at least stick around, maybe you'll learn something new. So let's get started with the example we have on the screen. We have three sets of surface bodies, and all of them are identical, they've simply been patterned and copied. And what we wanna do is we wanna create boundary surfaces for all three of them and talk about some of the differences between them. So we're gonna start with this example down here, and we're gonna create a boundary surface that goes from here to here. Now this is a good time to talk about the differences between a boundary surface and a loft. Now in the background, the calculations to make these patches are very similar. They're a little bit different, but for the most part, a boundary surface and a lofted surface can give you two identical surfaces. There are some differences that we need to be aware of though. A loft requires that you have a starting and an ending profile, and then you can add some guide curves or a centerline path if you want. A boundary surface has direction one and direction two. Now direction one and direction two are simply different sides of the guides or the edges that you wanna use. In this case, we're going from here to here. These would both be direction one curves. We're going from one of them to the other. Direction two would connect the sides, basically the pink side of these patches. Now you don't have to have direction two curves and you don't have to have multiple direction one curves. You can have a single direction one and a single direction two. You can have multiple direction ones and a single direction two, multiple direction twos and a single direction one, and so on. There's really no limitation to the, the orientation that you have these edges as long as they intersect. That's the only requirement that your guide curves, your direction two, direction one curves all intersect, whether it's inside of the edge somewhere or if it's at the end points. There's also another distinction I like to make between a loft and a boundary surface, and this is one of the main reasons I have boundary as my go-to as opposed to loft. When you have a lofted surface and you select an edge, you are required to use that entire edge. You can flip the endpoints or the connectors around, but you cannot move them along the edge. In a boundary surface, we have complete control over where these are. So for instance, if we needed to make a smaller patch in the middle to help control the curvature, and we wanted to do things like control the weight or direction of the influence, we can do that, we can knit them together, and then we can start working from side to side. And this is something that I do quite a bit, especially when I'm working with very complicated shapes. I might make these smaller boundary patches and let the curvature influence of the surfaces around it really control how things happen in the middle. For now, I'm just gonna go ahead and drag these endpoints all the way to the end, use the entire curve. So now that we understand that a little bit, let's take a look at applying some edge relations. So in this case, we have a couple options. None is simply a coincident relationship. Direction vector allows us to determine the direction of influence. Doesn't really work well with an example like this where we have 3D curvature. Tangency to face applies a direction at the edge, but really doesn't do much after that. We do have some control over the weight. For instance, we can increase that and give it some more influence. And you notice that the patch sections that we're looking at, it made the first section twice the size of the second section. So it allows more influence over that surrounding curvature. And then we have curvature to face option. Now when we look at these, curvature to face not only applies a tangency at the edge, but it also applies a weighted influence. It still says number 1.0 here for the tangent length, but it applies an influence based on the surrounding geometry. So if I change these to curvature to face, we get a different result than we would with tangency to face. Now in this specific case, I'm gonna use curvature to face and I'm gonna say okay. Now, the thing that we need to be aware of with this method, and I see this happen all the time with people that just are starting out with complex surfaces, especially with boundaries. Whenever I'm modeling geometry that can be mirrored, that there's some sort of symmetry, I model the least amount possible. It allows me to really focus the control on what I'm looking at and where I wanna control the curvature. So in this case, we're making the entire top of some component, and I'm only working in quarter because it has symmetry. So in this case, we'd have to mirror it, and I'm gonna mirror the bodies. We'll go ahead and say okay. 
Then we also need to mirror across the right plane these bodies as well. Now we can knit all these surfaces together if we wish. And I can go back and I can knit the originals because I forgot to do that. But let's go ahead and just knit everything together and take a look at the results. So the problem that you run into, and you can kind of see this on the screen because I have my edges set to display tangencies as dashed lines. The section where we go across the mirror plane does not have tangency. This edge does not have tangency. Because we didn't have a curve there, we didn't have an edge there, we had no way to control its direction. If I hide these edges and we rotate this around, in some instances you can start to see a crease there. Now this crease doesn't look like very much here, but it is very apparent, especially when you start making parts. And again, I see this all the time. Somebody starts modeling in SOLIDWORKS, they really wanna make a cool looking part, maybe it's a car, maybe it's something that has symmetry that really makes sense only to mirror, make half of it and mirror it. Well, they run into this trap where they don't know how to control the tangency across the mirror plane. So let's talk about how we can do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hide this body And let's talk about the other examples. So in order for us to control the influence, we need to at least have a 2D sketch that we can make our relation normal to. So let's start sketching on plane one, and we're gonna add a spline. Now, SOLIDWORKS has a style spline, and we're gonna talk about that in the next example, but let's start with this standard spline here. I'm gonna go from this point to this point and hit the escape key to end it. Now you'll notice that we don't have any spline handles here, and this is something I noticed in 2016. By default, it shows the, the tangency handles as hidden, or it doesn't enable them. So you have to go into your document properties under system options, sketch, and you need to enable the spline tangency and curvature handles. Why they have that set up, I don't know, but in order to see those, you need to move them around. You'll also notice that it's displaying the control polygon. If you don't like to see that, you can right click, and you can turn off the display control polygon if this is how you're used to working with the spline handles. So what we wanna do is apply some relations here. We're gonna do an equal curvature, and equal curvature applies tangency and a weight to it. So we have a curvature that is very much equal to the boundary surface that we created. It should look very similar. Let's go ahead and say okay. Let's come back in here, and in this case we're gonna sketch on the right plane and again, we're gonna use a standard spline going from this point to this point, and we'll again apply our equal curvature relation. And we're gonna say okay. So now back on our surface tab, we'll make a boundary surface, direction one, again to here. But before I select the second edge, I just wanna show you that I can have direction two curves without having multiple direction one curves. You see that it doesn't meet the boundary that I'm looking for but you do have that option to just use different selections or multiple selections. For instance, I could just use one direction one and one direction two. Let's go ahead and complete this and talk about the relations. Now on the ends, I'm gonna use curvature to face. And on my sketches for direction two, I'm gonna say normal to profile. Now you might get this option here or this, this error pop up that says the guide profile curves tangents at the constrained points does not match that of the edges. So it's basically telling us that there is some sort of influence between these edges. It, it's not looking right, but we're not too worried about it. We're just gonna okay that error and, and move on. Now one interesting thing that happens here is we now have a tangent influence slider. So if we kick this slider up, the curves in direction one have more influence over the curvature. Now if we bring this one back down to zero and we take the endpoints, the normal two, and kick that up, you notice it doesn't have much influence here. Well, those don't really have too much influence because of the lack of curvature, the lack of surrounding geometry, as our equal curvature relation would. So in most cases, I would caution against using this tangent influence slider. I would avoid it and I would try to do it with sketch geometry or edges, but if you must play with this, then um, be very careful with it, do a lot of curvature analysis. So we're gonna say okay, and let's go ahead and mirror this. So in this case, we have plane one, we are going to mirror these bodies, and this time I'm gonna go ahead and knit the surfaces here. 
I'll still have to go back and knit them all together, right? We're gonna go ahead and mirror all these bodies, knit those, and again, I'll add one more knit. Now, one interesting thing that happens if you don't know this, when you're doing a mirror and you knit surfaces together, it'll only knit the surface bodies that you're mirroring. So for instance, when I mirrored this piece, it would only knit it to this because these two were not knitted together. So something interesting that you may or may not know. All right, so now when we look at this, we no longer have the hard seams across the mirror line. Everything's nice and smooth. The geometry looks a little funky in this area, but everything is nice and smooth, and we don't have to worry about having an area where we do not have tangency across our mirror plane. So that means that we've at least made a nice, smooth transition between everything, and we can be happy with the results. We know that we're not going to have a bad surface when we physically produce this thing. So now that we've seen a boundary surface with open edges or open direction to curves, and then we saw a boundary surface with splines that were set to equal curvature, let's take a look at the last set of surfaces here. Now, we're going to use a style spline in this case, so let's start sketching. I'll start on the right plane, go to my spline dropdown, and select style spline. Now, in 2016, SOLIDWORKS gave us the available options to do a Bezier, which was the standard style spline option from last year, or degree three, five, or seven B spline. Now this is a very nice option, and this essentially means the number of internal control points that you have that are controlling the spline. Now I'm gonna use a degree seven, and we'll talk about that in just a second. So I'm gonna place three initial lines here. I'm gonna place one intermediate point, a second intermediate point, and then one, two, and three, all the way back down to this edge. Now, SOLIDWORKS is not a true class A surfacing program. It doesn't have the surface control that you have in things that are dedicated to doing surfaces. But what you do have is a style spline with multiple controls that you can come in and you can do a little trickery to make it better. So I'm gonna take this first line and my edge and I'm gonna make these tangent. And then I'm gonna take the next two edges. So we're gonna have three edges, one, two, and three, and we're gonna make them collinear. Now, essentially what I've done is I've created um, sort of a fake G3 continuity. Now, if you're familiar with surfacing, then you probably heard G0, G1, G2, and G3 continuity. And they essentially mean things like G0 is coincident, G1 has tangency, G2 has curvature, and G3 actually has uh, it more of an acceleration amount, the, the rate of change of the curvature of the surface going into the edge in question. So we don't really have that level of control over our surfaces, but taking three of these edges, making them collinear, and having the first one tangent to the surrounding geometry can give you a much smoother transition in your surfaces. So I'm gonna take these three edges, I'm gonna make them collinear, and again, I now have control over these, I can move each point individually, I can also dimension them, and then I have some internal points where I can control the curvature. Now I can also delete internal points if I don't want to have too much control, and in general, you want to limit the amount of control points you have. You want to minimize them. So we can move these points around, and essentially we're making a very smooth transition here. Now if you select this, You'll also notice that it shows the curve type in the properties now. It says B spine degree seven, control vertices we have nine. You need to have at least eight, I believe, to have a degree seven B spine in here. But we have nine points, so um, we're completely happy here. We have a nice transition. Let's go ahead and say okay. And we'll sketch on the front plane and finish off this other side. And again, style spline, degree seven, say okay. and we're gonna start sketching. One, two, three, do an intermediate point. One, two, three, back down. So we'll take this first one again, we'll make it tangent, and then we're gonna take the first three and we'll make them collinear. Same thing over here, the first one will be tangent, and then one, two, three, collinear. Now you do have to be careful sometimes that you don't have points that overlap. So you notice that I drag that point to the right and what I've actually done is I've overlapped it with the surrounding edge. Now it does work, but it might induce a little interesting curvature when you really get down to the nitty gritty and looking at it. 
So what I wanna do is I'm gonna move this around and I wanna get a nice smooth transition. I don't want too much of a peak here. I'm gonna pull that down and then I'm gonna take this edge and smooth it out. Now I can always select this spline and I can show the curvature if I wanna get an idea of how things look and then I can move these points around until I'm happy with the results. So I wanna get that nice smooth transition, maybe pull these points out just a little bit and I'm gonna say okay. So now I could do the exact same thing. I can make a boundary surface and I can use these with the normal two option. But in this case, I'm actually going to extrude them because I know that I'm going to be mirroring about this plane. I know that as long as I extrude from this 2D sketch, which is planar, and we sketch it on the plane that we are gonna to use to mirror, then I can ensure that any curvature that I add, any relations I add because of the way that these two surfaces were created, will be okay for me to apply a relation here. So now on boundary surface, I'm gonna go from here to here, and I'm gonna use this edge and this edge. Now I'm not gonna apply a curvature relation in this case, because I have complete surrounding curves, I'm gonna do a tangency with edge one, or direction one, and I'm gonna do a tangency with direction two. Now this is probably a more realistic case when you might want to use a tangency influence slider. If you want to have more influence from this edge, you can kick the slider up, or if you want to have more influence from this edge, you can kick the slider up and see how it raises the surface. Now I think this would be a more acceptable use of the tangency influence slider than the last example where we had two sketches and equal curvature relation. So now we're going to say okay, I'll hide this, hide this because we don't need them. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll knit these three together right from the get-go and then start the mirror. Mirror, knit, and then we want the right plane. Mirror, knit as well. And now again, let's go ahead and turn on the first two. So now we have three examples. If I hide the edges, maybe modify the appearance to be a high gloss plastic. We can take a look at the differences. You see the first one has that crease, that seam there across the mirror line. Now we got lucky, there wasn't one here, and that's because the curvature coming into and going out of this edge was much closer to tangent, so that we really have a very minimal crease, it's probably not even enough to notice, but on the short side, where the curvature was making a hard turn and then coming in here, we have a much more noticeable crease, definitely not what you want. Now in this case, we don't have the crease, but we didn't really have great control over the curvature, over the spline. Now in the last case, we had a lot more control over the spline coming into and out of those regions, and we were able to create a pretty nice example of the surface. You can come in here and you can turn on real view graphics. You can come in and do maybe a favorite if we want something with a spotlight or even go into something that has um, a more you know realistic reflection. You see that this has sort of a background in it. We can see how that looks as it goes across those seams. It's a nice smooth blend across there and that's really the ideal result. So those are three different, very similar boundary surfaces, but very different results. We have one that has a bad seam across it. We have one that, that's fine, but we really didn't have very much control over the spline once you add that equal curvature relation. And then we use this style spline with a B spline degree seven curve and use that tangency and collinear relations between those edges to make a nice direction to curve or a nice direction to extruded surface to really control the final result that we got. Now, of course, there are many other different ways that you can use boundary surface that it's up to you how you wanna use it, but it's a very powerful tool and it's usually my go-to complex surface and I highly recommend that you at least play with it, try to make an example like this, see how it works out for you. I hope you enjoyed this video and would love to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts or suggestions for other videos in the comment box below. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit LearnSolidWorks.com for more SolidWorks tips, tricks, and tutorials.